Okay, so first up is RSI today, May 17th through the 18th. Um, I'm going to jump over this other screen to kind of explain how this is going to work. All right, guys, it is Invictus launch week 2954, which in our years is 2024. <laughs> May 17th means that RSI is actually in the expo hall today. So what's going to happen in this event is you're going to have this list. It says May 17th through May 18th, and it's got all this stuff listed, right? Well, what's actually happening is May 17th, RSI is in the main hall, right? And then on May 18th, RSI will go to the secondary hall, and then Origin Jumpworks, Consolidated Outlands, and Argo will all be in the main hall on the 18th. And then on the 19th, so we're going to go down, you can see what ships are here. Um, on the 19th, what's going to happen is Ar the Argo and Origin stuff is going to move to the secondary hall, and then the Crusader stuff will most likely be in the main hall. So they alternate. There's two, basically two floors in the expo hall, and um, all of the all of the ship manufacturers that have a day on one day also get a second day in the secondary hall. So they're around for two days effectively, right? And they just keep rotating them out like that till you get to the end of the uh, expo. Um, so again, today is RSI. That's all that's there that I saw. Um, it, it took up the entire expo hall. It's, there's enough RSI ships that uh, it really fills everything up. Um, so everything's rentable for two days. In this year, don't look for uh, the ship itself to rent it. There's these little stand-up um, kind of kiosks in front of all the ships. That's what you want to look at. You basically just hold F now. There's no raising your Moby Glass or anything like that. They, it's, it's streamlined with the new UI. It's pretty fantastic, actually. I didn't experience any errors, and I was in there like within the first 30 seconds of it opening. Um, it loaded pretty quick. Uh, minus the errors about my inventory, um, which I won't really complain about because I wasn't there for my inventory. <laughs> Renting a ship is much easier and much more streamlined and very, very smooth. It, it was a much better experience than I've had in the past, um, especially right now when it's super busy on those servers. It always gets really busy. So there will be some limited edition ships during this week's sale event. And I want to let you guys know about them in case you really did want them, because that's the only way to buy them. You can't CCU to any of these ships that I know of. There may be an exception somewhere, but as far as I know, you can't do it. So the only way to get them is through the limited edition sales that they have in three different waves for each ship. I'm going to go over each of them just for you. The first ship that's going to hit the wave block is going to be the Constellation Phoenix. It'll be available May 17th and 18th, so six total chances to purchase this ship. You can see the waves on your screen here. Convert for your own time zone. I've got UTC and EST time zones. That would be East Coast US. Next up, we've got the Aegis Idris P and the Aegis Javelin. Now, I don't know if they're going to individually be listed on each of these days, or if both of them will be available both days. It was a little bit confusing to me because they had two ships and two dates, whereas the Constellation had one ship and two dates. So for the assumption here, I'm gonna go with, they're both available on May 21st and May 22nd, but who the hell knows, they may just have one of them available on the 21st and one of them available the 22nd. If your money bags in buying both of these, I wish you good luck. Um, there will be three or six chances, depending on how they actually roll it out. Uh, if you want one of these monstrosities, uh, this is the time to get it. Good luck. Last but not least, we've got the Drake Kraken and Kraken Privateer for May 25th and 26th. Again, I don't know if they'll both be available on each day or if each one has its own designated day. I wish they were more clear. Um, you can check out the post in uh, Spectrum if you want to look at it yourself. But this is the information that I gleaned for it. Uh, again, I've converted the times from UTC to East Coast time. I think they have Pacific on the actual post in, uh, in Spectrum. Um, so again, if you guys are going for the Drake Krakens, one of them or both of them, because your money bag's not like me, good luck. I hope to see you in the verse. Okay, this is a very important point about Warbond CCUs for this particular year's event. Yes, there will be CCUs available each day, but they will only last for 24 hours and then they will go away. So again, if you want it, grab it. If it can fit into your chain or might in the future, grab it, buy it, do it. The finale will 
have it'll be two days long and it will have not only brand new ones come out but a few of the previous ones will also join them no i don't know which ones those will be i wish i did but if you see a warbind that could fit into one of your chains or maybe you're planning for another chain down the line just grab them the day that they're available because there's no guarantee that they will be back the first warbond ccu of Invictus Launch Week 2954 is the Polaris. $50 discount on this massive warship. <laughs> um, right off the bat, it's 50 bucks. The store is kind of jacked right now. It looks like it would actually allow you to pick one of these ships that are higher priced than the Polaris, but it, it doesn't actually function. It'll kick it out. So that's good that they have that in. Um, but also, for those that you can purchase... It doesn't give you a price tag or option to actually buy, so you're gonna have to. You may have to give the store uh, an hour or so to to kind of figure out what's going on. Maybe it's just overwhelmed with uh, access requests or something. I know the game was super buggy when I jumped in and I went to go rent some ships. Um, I couldn't access inventory for approximately a half hour or so. It's just getting overwhelmed, I'm sure. But we can still go through these. Um, we know that. You can't do a Polaris to Polaris. You can't do a, the same dollar amount over here as well. So any of these 750, you can't do a zero dollar one. It's not going to let you. At least it won't right now. It, it might later if it gets more more messed up. But uh, that would not be the intent uh, for this event. So I'm going to assume it's not going to be functional in the future as well. So next up would be the Hammerhead, right? So. Oh, uh, the Polaris has had one other warbond. It was last year in IAE, I think. I'm pretty sure. Um, the Hammerhead has had a couple warbonds as well over the past couple years. It had one this year already. Um, so that's probably the best choice is going to be the Hammerhead. Let's go look through the rest, though. Again, if you'll notice, I, I clicked the Hammerhead. There's no price tag down here at all. So, uh, again, the store is kind of jacked right now. So if you still experience that, uh, know that you're not the only one. The Nautilus is a uh, would make a decent price jump to the Polaris, but again, this is a concept ship. The Solstice Edition is not only a concept ship, but it's also a special edition. So double X's on that one. Same for the Hammerhead Best in Show, unless you actually have it. Um, I, I would not recommend getting any of these or using any of these in a, a CCU chain. Um, the only exception would be the hammerhead if you already have it because it's not, it shouldn't, I'm using air quotes that you can't see off screen. It, <laughs> it should uh, never get a warbond uh, discount on it. Odyssey, another concept ship. The Perseus, another concept ship. And the Merchantman, another concept ship. Whew. Um, yeah, the Orion also. And then you've got a bunch of choices that are all random uh, limited edition ships until you get down to the Carrick. And that's uh, going to be a $150 jump. Whew. Okay, so jumping back, let's start at square one again. The Polaris for Warbond should be $700. Forget that it says $750 on the right. So you could jump from the Carrick, which is the first non-concept, non-limited edition, save $50, spend $100. Okay? That's the only war bond that you can do that, that doesn't involve something like this, which is spending 25 to save the same 50 but, I mean, you could do that too. It's only spending 25 Look, we try to not do concept ships over on the left, but if you already have CCUs to the Perseus, this could make sense. When you're talking about ships that are this high dollar value, to try and get a $25 increment and still save 50, which is overall a good value, um, this is kind of the only way it makes sense. They're both concepts, so they're both going to increase in price. As long as you can lock in the price of the Perseus upgrade, you can do this, right? So if we got the Perseus here, What's the next logical jump from the Perseus? Um, I mean, the Merchantman's going to go up also, but you got to get to the Merchantman, 
right? So this is pretty speculative with three, um, three, uh, three ships that are all concept ships. So this would be twenty-five, fifty-dollar jump from the Merchantman to the Polaris using this method. Um, that seems reasonable based on the two hundred dollar increase. What if you jump down? What if you already have the Carrick? Because the Carrick's been a war bond CCU before. So that's a hundred dollars from the Carrick to all the way to the Polaris, right? Because we've got a seventy-five dollar jump here, and then we've got a twenty-five dollar gap from the Perseus concept to the Polaris concept. Or, I mean, you could just do this. There, same. It's the same amount, but if you did it in two staggering steps, right? So if you did the Perseus here, that's only twenty-five dollars out of pocket, and then you could hope for the Perseus to have a war bond sale for some amount. And then you would jump from the Carrick standard to this for another discount off the 75. So this is one of those exception cases where because the Perseus is the next in line to the Polaris and the Polaris um, are both, the Perseus and the Polaris are both concept ships, you could do this. I, I would not push you away from doing this upgrade right here. Um, it's the cheapest one, and it's the only one that really makes sense because they're both concepts. And if you're going, if you're going way far down the stack, I mean that's it's the same amount, but you're spending a hundred dollars today versus hoping for a discount on the uh, Perseus down the road. So yeah, I would say this might be one of those exceptions where you grab the Perseus twenty-five dollar upgrade. Now, having said all that, you could also go one more other route we do a standard polaris upgrade if you've got a hammerhead from a previous ccu or war bond sale that's still the 25 dollar jump and you don't have to spend any new cash on it um you could use in-store credit for this 25 dollars because again if you already have the hammerhead war bond then it, it makes sense you just pay the $25 either out of store credit or you just chip in another $25 now without a war bond and buy this upgrade too. So there are definitely two paths for the Polaris. This one you could at least lock in your, your savings up to the Polaris and the $25 is just, um, there's no way to save there. Or you could, again, if the Hammerhead's not, if you don't have a war bond from the Hammerhead, you you could go that other route of it again this is speculative so this is more of a of a seasoned veteran of the ccu game kind of kind of play here um where you're betting on the perseus having a war bond or um you just eventually pay up from the the carrick to the perseus or even check this you could do oh perseus my bad where's the perseus there's the perseus and you could speculate even further down the chain with additional war bonds. Perseus to the Merchantman. And then, I mean, I doubt the Merchantman's ever going to go on a war bond sale, though. Like, that's a thing. Like, I don't think the, war, the Merchantman's ever going to be on a, a war bond. I mean, it might be one day, but this used to be a $250 ship. So if you got in early, you've already saved like $400. Um, the Orion, mmm. It's highly unlikely. I don't feel like these are ever going to be it. But then again, like I didn't think the Polaris would ever really get a war bond sale. But here we are, one more time, looking at the Polaris. Um, but again, you could go down the stack and you could do more speculation. Or eventually, if 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 it looks like the Perseus is going to release soon, you just crank out a, a seventy-five dollar non-war bond CCU from the Carrot to the Perseus, and then you've locked in uh, that hundred dollar savings. So you could do it that way too. Um, you could do it that way. So there, there's two ways to do it. If you haven't played the CCU game for very long, uh, I would say Polaris, just eat eat the extra savings and go to the Carrick. Um, obviously, if you've already got the Warbond for the Hammerhead, uh, that that's a pretty compelling argument to just grab the Hammerhead here, $25 out of pocket or out of... Um, out of uh, store credit and call it a day. Whew, that's a tough call though, guys. I, I, I'm not getting the Perseus or the Polaris or the Hammerhead, so um, I haven't gone this high yet in any of my chains. Uh, the ships are too big for me. So 
I don't want to say you're on your own, but at least there's two viable options today even uh, for getting to the Polaris. So unless something is still messed up with the store, this is the only Warbond CCU we're going to get today. It makes sense that it's an RSI ship, but I don't understand why it's only one. Usually they give us a couple a day. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, there's nothing else here. Zoomy, 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 zoom. No more other Warbonds. That's kind of a bummer. So let's jump over to the standalone, see if there's anything there. All right, zooming on up to the top. There are some interesting war bonds here. Of course, we have the Pulse and the Pulse LX still. Uh, let's double check that they're LTI for the war bond sale for uh, buying a ship outright. That is correct. So you can still get both the Pulse and Pulse LX for a war bond price of $25, bucks, $5 discount. And they've got uh, LTI on them. There's two more available ships here. One is the MPUV Tractor. This is relatively new. Um, I actually don't know anything about this ship, so I'm going to read it for the first time with you. Okay, so it's got dual tractor beams, so it looks like it's going to be a, a cargo maneuvering ship or something of uh, something of that nature. Um, oh, it's going to be a modular ship too. Okay, so they're going to have probably different modules that you can uh, attach to the undercarriage here, the section underneath the, the main piece of the, the ship that you see. Um, my guess is this will be the only one ever that anybody ever wants because it's going to be modular. You can put the cargo connector there. You could probably put the, uh, the troop carrier there as well, um, among other things. So interesting little ship with LTI. It's 35 bucks. It's $35 war bond. Okay. So it's $35 war bond. That might make a decent uh, starter for a chain too. It's obviously less or um, more expensive than the uh, Pulse uh, speeder bikes up here, but thirty-five bucks is still a decent place to start uh, any of these chains, especially when it's got LTI. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd recommend either one of those for a chain. They're both cheap enough that they make good starters for any CCU chain. And the last one on here is the Medevac. You can buy the Medevac outright for $55 uh, on a Warbond sale. This is the new Ursa Rover with a Medevac uh, conversion, effectively. They've really made this one, uh, at least for the, the internal teams, it's basically a modular vehicle that they put whatever they want in the back, as long as they can make it fit. They have a luxury version, they've got a troop transport, and then they've got this medevac, and I'm sure they're going to plan others. Uh, but this seems to be like it would be a very interesting vehicle to have. Uh, I'm going to go try some will-it-fit tests. I have a feeling this is going to be a, a decent example, just like the, uh, uh, what is it, the Pisces uh, medevac uh, variant as well, that you can put right in the middle of a C2. Um, I'm going to go test that out and see if it fits. The way I want it to um, makes a good mobile home. They did announce that they are changing the tier three beds, so you can make those uh, spawn points, which is really fantastic for anybody who was around when they changed that from uh, the biggest one was like the Cuddy Red was one of the only other ships in the verse besides like the the 890 Jump that had a med bed in it, and they kind of nuked that thing, so it was basically minor heels kind of thing. Um, it looks like they're changing all those tier three beds back to be spawn points, but they're going to put distance based on them. My assumption is there won't be any distance based on the 890 jump because it's, it's the ship that it is. Uh, but this one, they specifically called out that the medevac, you're going to have to, <laughs> the, the way they put it, you're going to have to die close to it <laughs> if you want to get respawn there. So it's something that you would want to take into battle or at least very close to uh, maybe a bunker that you're entering, uh, so you can still actually respawn there. It has to be some sort of a distance. They didn't mention what that distance was, and I'm sure it's going to be buggy here uh, upon release, but I think it, it it's going to make a valuable uh, kind of ship to have, for, for most people to have, that are going to be engaging in any type of activity where they could die. Um, any type of combat, PvP or otherwise. So this might be a good one to, to think about adding or at least CCUing up to. Um, and the fact that it makes it a, a war bond sale today for a discount, uh, I'm sure they're going to sell a bunch of them. So let's jump back. Let's make sure there's nothing else in here. I thought the Ursa uh, Medevac was the last one on here that was a war bond, but I'm going to double check. They always throw me off with this 
<laughs> this tag here. It always makes me think Warbond, and it's just not uh, for a lot of them. So let's keep going. I want to see if the, uh, it looks like the Hornets are not there. Oh, the Zeus is on concept. Okay. So there might be some concepts too. I'll keep an eye out for those. The Hornet Mark II is, does not appear to be, oh yeah, it's still on Warbond. There we go. The 160 Warbond. Um, again, decent ship. It's a, going to be a great overall combat ship for the foreseeable future. I think they intended it that way. Um, even though right now the Buccaneer, one of my favorite ships ever, is now finally viable again. I'm so in love right now. Um, anyway, getting back to the CCU stuff and war bonds, etc. Concept ship is a Zeus. Uh, I still don't know enough about this ship yet to consider looking at it for a purchase. It seems like it's just going to be a competitor to like the C1, maybe a little bit larger in, in stature and size, but around the same form factor kind of thing. We'll see how it goes with that one um, when it comes out. Uh, oh, we got more concept ships. The Apollo Triage, again, concept pricing. Remember this this price down here, if it's still a concept, it will increase. So if you're the person that doesn't want to play the CCU game, but you still want a quick discount, buy the concepts because that's definitely a way to get a little discount um, and usually get loaner ships too for it. Um, I may cover loaners at uh, some point during uh, Invictus launch week here, but uh, not right now. Um Constellation Phoenix ILW, uh, I think I mentioned earlier in this video, there are uh, limited stock ships that are available throughout IAE. Uh, this is one of them today, the Phoenix. Concept uh, Apollo as well, Perseus and Polaris, of course, are available. Um, I don't know exactly if the concept ships will stay throughout IAE. I'm sorry, I just said IAE. I don't know for sure if all of the concept ships will stay in the store uh, during the entire Invictus launch week. Uh, they specifically mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, that con uh, the Warbond CCUs will come and go, and then some very specific ones that they didn't mention will come back at the end. But not all of them will come back at the end. I just want to reiterate that point one more time. Fear of missing out is going to apply here. If you see a war bond that you think you might want, just grab it because it's not it. It's less likely to come back at the end the than what we had a couple years ago where they all came back at the end. Um, they specifically said in the Invictus launch week notes that the war bonds will only a few of them will come back, and they didn't mention which ones. So, if you want it and it's there, grab it. That's it for day one of Invictus 2954, everyone. I hope this information helps you save some cash on your next CCU chain and maybe a couple of ship purchases that you do outright in the store. And maybe even one of your friends is finally joining the verse because it's way better than it used to be. I mean, this patch has definitely had some bugs, but wow, it's definitely not a 318, right? <laughs> um... I don't know. I guess that's it, guys. I'm just going to show you how happy I am that the Buccaneer is back in play, finally. And uh, thank you for joining me on this, uh, this wonderful adventure. Zytec, out.